On the number line, the distance between x and y is greater than the distance between x and z. The z lie between x and y on the number line. Statement 1, x, y, z is less than 0. Statement 2, x, y is less than 0. I'm going to first translate this question into math. So the distance between x and y, that's going to be absolute value x minus y. And I know that because it's distance on the number line. Anything that's distance on the number line will always be absolute value is greater than the distance between x and z. So that's absolute value of x minus z. Effectively speaking, because the x is the same, what this is telling us is that the y value here has to be less than the z value here if the absolute value x minus y is greater than the absolute value x minus z. y would have to be less than z. And of course this would be true whether this is an absolute value or not because what that means is that we're subtracting the y so if the y is a negative number of greater magnitude than z, then x minus y would still give us something greater than the z. So we don't need the absolutes here. So if we look here at statement one, x, y, z is less than zero. This gives us two options. We have x, y, z all negative, or one of the three is negative. So x is negative, y is negative, or z is negative. But only one of the three. Nevertheless, that's two options, so that's gonna be insufficient. Next one, x, y is less than zero. So that tells us that x or y, but we still don't know which one, so that together is insufficient. We put them together and analyze for c. We, we've got potentially either x, y, z are all negative together to make the entire thing negative, or is negative alone, or y is. So if we drew that out, just for the sake of example, because if you think about the question, does z lie between x and y? So we could take a number line like this and say, okay, well, that's zero, that's y, and that's z, and we'll call this x. So that's z in between, but we don't necessarily know that. So if they're all negative, we could say, for example, we get z on the outside, and then x here, and then y here, and then 0, and each of those would be a valid case. So here x is in the middle, and here x is not in the middle. So we have two distinct answers to the question, so that's got to be E. And of course there are other diagrams you could draw, other ways you could draw this with positives and negatives. However, we've already got two examples. We have one drawing here where z is in the middle, we have one drawing here where z is not in the middle, and so that means we have ultimately two or more distinct answers. We can tell that the answer must be E. If you like this video, the best thing you can do to support the channel would be to click the like button or subscribe. And if you want a free PDF guide, so that's gonna be top three arithmetic techniques or properties of numbers guide, you can find that by clicking on the little information button at the top of the video. Thanks for watching.